Welcome to garden two, number two in a series. This will be February of 2021, starting from a slightly different angle than last month. I kind of wanted to give a view of the, the front of the house because one of my goals in all my projects is to improve our curb appeal. So this is kind of what it's looking like in February. And I wanted to point out, because I didn't capture it last time, what our uh, parking strip looks like, which is nothing to nothing to brag about. This is a lantana that I've been pruning this week and it's it was a very overgrown and woody as you can see. I am not done pruning it but I've um, run out of space in my green barrel so it's on hold for now. So another area that is begging for some attention would be this area under our pine trees. You may know pine trees are very difficult to grow under because they have a lot of shade and they drop a lot of pine needles and pine cones and they're just generally not great spots for growing. Another thing I wanted to share was that we have a sort of a walkway in front of the house, but uh, it's not a very impressive thing. It was put in place by the previous owner and I kind of redesigned it when we moved here, but it's a, a series of stepping stones and because of our grass being so thatchy and thick, the stones have really um, disappeared deep into the grass, as well as these little boulders. So it um, it's not adding to our curb appeal. I think we're gonna need to address this because I don't think it's very welcoming. I do like having a walkway in front though, rather than just entering the house off the driveway. So here's where we started last month. And um, this is still a work in progress. So I have this cute little bench that I did show last time kind of changed out what's on it. It is not suitable for sitting on, but it's a cute little accent. However, it's not very visible. I'm thinking of painting it. What do you think? Any ideas? Right now, with the lighting we have at the moment, it actually is kind of visible, but at certain times during the day, it just blends right into that tree. So, any ideas would be appreciated. And I placed it here after I'd already planted these ferns. So as you can see, there's a fern underneath it, as well as a hydrangea, and they really are not in good spots. So those are the uh, plants that I'll be moving. That fern may go right here next to the other fern, the other two ferns and in front of the boxwood. And that hydrangea may be the one that's going to move over by the pine trees. So this urn here has some ajuga in front of it, that darker ajuga. I mentioned that last month. And then it's got purple fountain grass, um, Dichondra, uh, Silver Falls Dichondra, and it has a little vinca, a white little vinca, but the vinca seems to be getting crowded out by the purple fountain grass. We'll see if it can hold its own. I have begun my pruning, so my little boxwoods are in better shape. They're not perfect yet. They're going to need more trimming, but they're going to grow. It's not even spring yet, so uh, they're this was the first of many haircuts to come. And then behind them is a baby gem boxwood that I've shaped a little more into a pointed shape. And um, I kind of like the way that looks. Possibly this one may become a candidate for a spiral. I'm not sure, I'm certainly not a topiary um, expert, but I feel like I might be able to form that into a spiral. We'll see. Um, moving along, I think I pointed out that I have a couple of different cucaras down here in front. Um, and a lot of my bulbs are starting to bloom. These are freesias and I've staked them up because I noticed that they don't stand up on their own and they, when they lay on the ground, they get blemished and they're really not very good on a, um, in a vase or in an arrangement because they, they just don't look as good. Behind the freesias, I have a couple of hydrangeas that are pretty sad. I, I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong but they're not doing very well. One of the things that I get confused about with hydrangeas is the old wood, new wood thing. I, I don't know if these are blooming on older new wood. And unfortunately, I planted these a long time ago, did not retain any of the plant information. My poor yards, my gardens have been neglected over the years. We've had a lot of family stuff going on and the, the gardens just weren't maintained. So we're making up for lost time here. So I have a couple of hostas in front of that um, foxtail fern, and those are new to the garden. They seem to be doing very well. And then behind them I have a new plant, 
I'm gonna forget the name. I'll put it on the screen. Well, there's an azalea there. That's a white azalea, but this is the new plant. It's silver something. Um, I really love the foliage, the silver look to it. It's got a little bit of a fuzzy feel, kind of like lamb's ears do, which I just, I don't know. I'm really into that, that kind of feel these days. So I, I like the way that looks in contrast to the azalea and the coleus. And then in front of that, I've moved this pot that has alyssum in it. That was closer to the porch before. And I just didn't know where to put it. So here it is. I also have a second coleus here. I don't know if I pointed that out last time. Uh, again, I don't know the particular name, but I like the way it contrasts with the lime green one. Some miscellaneous little bulbs. One of the things that I've mentioned before is we have bulbs everywhere and I try to congregate them, the older bulbs, as much as possible. So the ones that you see right here next to this metal um, garden ornament are ones that I've gathered from other areas in the garden just to kind of put them in one spot. I should say not the ones right there in the middle, not these ones, but these ones over here, which I believe are um, paper whites. We'll see. Then here's a little more closer view of that gomphrina I mentioned last time. It's so pretty when it has more than one bloom on it and I'm hoping it'll grow bigger, I'm sure it will. And then this is a, a sea, sea thrift, I think it's called, that I need to move. It blooms a little bit on the red side and I'm gonna put it over by the pine trees where I've got a little bit of red action going on. So here's the other shrub that I pruned on this side of the yard and it's gone a little boxy. I, my main goal wasn't to shape it, but rather to open it up because it was very dense. So I wanted to give it more um, air and I wanted to let more light into the center of it so that it would just, I guess, I don't know, be more healthy. I feel like they do better when they've, when they've been pruned this way periodically. So it's gonna get more haircuts too and we'll make it more round, more spherical over time. I did change a lot on the porch. The, um, oh, I forgot to put my little boxwoods back into their planters by the door. But the uh, planters in the front are, they were in the last video and they didn't match because one of them had aged and was um, faded. There was a lot of white exposed on it. So I removed the plants that were in them. And in fact, those plants are now in these corrugated looking Planters. Those are not metal. They're plastic made to look like metal. So those are the natal plums that I mentioned last time. I think I called them palms, but they're plums. And then these are the boxwoods that go in those brown tall planters that I'm, I trimmed those as well, trying to make those into more of a pointed shape. And then I added a set of additional pots here. And the, um, so these pots on the step, the black one, those have, um, candy tuft in them, which will mound up and not get very tall. And then down here, I've got lobelia. Those are the bigger plants and you can't really see, but there's also some pansies in there that are experimental mystery pansies. They're from um, some seeds I collected off of a plant that I bought at a uh, box store. Um, and we'll see, we'll see if they grow properly. I think they're yellow, um, but yeah, I don't remember because that pansy was, in a, gar a different garden a long time ago and I kind of lost track of what it looked like. So here's my um, dwarf myrtle that I've mentioned before was shaped a bit like a hot dog bun or a hot dog at some point. And I'm still working on making it into two balls, but I've opened it up a lot like the other shrub. So you can almost see through it now. It was very dense before. I feel like it's gonna um, do better as a result of this trim. I've done this before and it really improved the health of it apparently. They just, it just had gotten so dense that, I don't know anything about shrubs, by the way, but this is just my opinion. So I'm hopeful that after a few more um, trims that this will have a better shape and that it will also fill out some more. And then down here, we are looking at the cat mint, which is still pretty dormant, I guess, or not actually growing very actively. Uh, all these petunias, are still blooming. They're looking a little raggedy. When, they, um, when they're done, or when I decide they're not looking good enough, I'll probably replace them with some of the seeds that I'm sowing. Um, I'm growing 
snapdragons, I'm growing petunias, pansies. I've got a lot of little annuals, so something will come up here. Then the azaleas look pretty good. I don't see a lot of buds on that one. Actually, I don't see a lot of buds on this one either, but I do have a flower, so maybe I just don't know what the buds look like. These are Encore Azaleas. I don't think I mentioned that last time. And this one's called Autumn Carnation, which makes me wonder, is it a mostly autumn blooming plant? I don't know. I should probably look that up. I did buy it in the fall and it was very much in bloom in the fall. So maybe that is the case. Um, over here, the uh, Arborvitae is still not in the ground, but that's because I haven't really decided how I want to arrange this area back here under our picture window. And um, I will get to it. I've got those uh, those agapanthus, those lilies of the Nile down there too. And I've got the shrubs in my little shrub nursery. So we'll come up with a plan at some point. I don't think last time I mentioned, but I have a uh, climbing rose here. I don't know the name of it, but it's white. And when it blooms, it's quite lovely. It doesn't always bloom much for me though. And that's, I take personal responsibility for that because I haven't taken good care of it. And if you don't take good care of your plants, they don't take good care of you, usually. So here is the tree that I mentioned trimming last video. And this is uh, the first time I've personally trimmed it as much all the way back. I mean, I've done some lower limbs before, but I actually pulled out the pole lopper and did this one. Had a little bit of trouble because, uh, man, that takes some upper body strength and I definitely don't have that, but thankfully the hubby was able to help. I did trim this boxwood as well, the one in the white pot, and I'm making this one into a ball shape and it looks nice to me, it looks better than it did. And this is a new baby from the Clarence section at Lowe's. This is a camellia, which has a bloom ready to come to open. This is a, um, what was the type? Let's see. It is a Matho, Mathatiana Supreme Camellia. And I can't tell from that picture if it's pink or if maybe it's a little bit red rose. We'll see. I'm hoping it's not real red because red is not my jam, but time will tell. I'm thinking it'll go behind this bench here because I need something back here. I do have a potato bush back here that I've been um, trying to topiary. It was a, a plant I bought quite a few years ago and almost killed. So that's what I'm doing now, trying to save it into the form of a topiary because that was all that was left. Um, iceberg roses in this pot right here and I pruned them a while ago. I don't see a lot of blooms on them. We'll see. I don't remember. I don't think I had it last year this time of year, so I don't know when it blooms. We'll see. And then the bougainvillea still. I do have a lot of bulbs in this whole area. And I did make a chart of where, what I put where, but I have not been able to put my fingers on that. So I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have some surprises. As always, there's lots of paper whites. Those are in the back here between the bird bath and the urn. But I also have freesias, you can see those. I think I need to stake some more of those up, but I don't remember what colors. Obviously there's some white ones there that are blooming, but I think I have some other colors as well. I recently just added a lot of gladiolas uh, back here, purple ones. I'm looking forward to seeing what those look like. So down here is a topiary that I just made. I need to anchor that better. That's looking pretty lopsided. I had a creeping fig that I was planning to plant in the ground. I have a fireplace in my backyard. I thought it would look pretty growing up on the fireplace, but then I've read about how invasive the roots are and how troublesome creeping fig can be, and I decided I needed to do something else with it. So the something else was to create a topiary ball with it because I'm obsessed with topiaries, obviously. Uh, what else is over here? Let's see. I've got some sage, that little yellow flower there behind the bird, and there's another one here. I really hope this flowers um, because it was beautiful when it flowered. It was kind of a buttercream yellow, really pretty. I've added some lamb's ear, so there's just a couple of them right there. I've got more as we go along. And then these are the Live Forever Sedum. Kind of that angle, those two plants there on the angle that I'm giving you. And oh, I love those. They're such low care and such pretty plants. And then this is my California Lilac. 
Cianthus concha. Still don't know where I'm gonna put it, but this is its temporary home. It's going to get more sunlight here. So I'm hoping that means it'll bloom even though it's just in a pot. I feel like I see flower buds on it. The, the thing, the thing is my yard is very sunlight challenged um, because we have a lot of big trees and those trees uh, really affect the, the sun and how much comes through. It's, it's kind of spotty, it ebbs and flows. So this is a sweet pea bush right here, the deeper green one. And that one blooms in a kind of a, I don't know, it's not really a purple, like a bit of a lilac color. I don't remember what this one in the pot is called. There's a tag. One day I'll know. One day I'll know it by heart, I mean. This one with the purple flowers is a verbena. And it's kind of, it's kind of wild, but I like it. It's very pretty. And then down here are the snapdragons from last month that I got at the 99 cent store. They are forming flower buds. I believe they're all pink, I'm hoping. They, they look really healthy, so I'm hoping they look nice when they blossom. This little dead looking, not dead, this, look, this little stumpy looking thing is an Angelonia. And then I have another one over here. I cut them back and they are a summer bloomer. So I'm looking forward to seeing those a little bit later. My carnations, here's one of those lamb's ears. My carnations are still doing very well. And this pot of pansies, uh, that I had by the bench before is just doing great. I think it really loved getting rain as did all my plants. And I have to say I love when it rains as well because then I don't have to water anything. My front yard is not irrigated and it's a hand water job. These two guys are still not looking much like each other but I am working on them. They are a little bit better. I think they're actually two different types of um, boxwood. That may be why the growth is different. I noticed when I was trimming them last week that the leaves are different sizes. So they may never look exactly the same, but they'll be cousins instead of brothers. So I didn't share this bed last uh, month. This little bed, my walkway bed, has some plants that I really love. It has this licorice plant. And again, it has the fuzzy leaves like the lamb's ear and that new plant, that silver one in the first bed and um, they're, they're kind of silver as well. Now it's worried me. It's also, let's see, it's a licorice plant also known as, let's see if I can remember, Helio, Heliochrysum petalari, I believe. Um, it worries me because it's really growing fast, but what I've discovered is it's wonderful in cut flower arrangements. So, while I will still have to cut it a lot to keep it under control, at least I know I have a good use and a reason that will prompt me to make cuttings of it, I think, I hope, because I'm planning to grow flowers this year and enjoy them. We'll see. Down here I have a little echinacea that I bought on clearance. It was nothing more than one or two little leaves, mostly brown leaves, and maybe one or two green leaves that gave me hope. I think I paid a dollar for it. It's a Proven Winners Pow Wow Echinacea. It's a beautiful raspberry color, and I'm glad to see that it's doing so well because I can't wait to see that in bloom. I have some um, daffodils here that I'm enjoying very much. This little guy here is a, I believe, a Coreopsis. I bought a few Coreopsis on Clarence as well and divided them. So I think I ended up with three or four um, individual plants. Here's another one here. And then there's one a little further down. And then I also seeded this bed with Coreopsis. I don't know if it's the exact same species, but it's yellow. And the ones that I bought at, the, at Lowe's were yellow. So hopefully that'll add a nice spot here. This is a sunshine legustrum right here. It's not very very lemon limey, which is the color that it was when I bought it and what I love about it. And I don't know if that's because it's winter. It's my first time growing it. So we'll see if it changes color in the next few months. And then I've got some little, I'm not sure if these are violas or pansies. I believe they're violas. I just got those for a dollar at Lowe's as well. And then Creeping Jenny, I've got some right here. I've got some more back here. I had one or two plants and I divided them 
and then a sedum and some little vincas. Now, there's something else I wanted to talk about. Oh yeah, so these purple fountain grasses are pieces, divisions of the one in the urn, but they're not growing and I'm gonna tell you why. Our cat thinks they're a delicious salad and she gnaws on them all the time and they won't grow because she eats them and then she plops her big fat butt right here in this empty spot where she can snack and relax. And then this plant is the last one I wanted to mention. It's called Veronica. I had a Veronica, I don't know, a couple of years ago that I had also found on clearance, but it was a very hot year and I was very busy. <clears throat> and sadly, it, it didn't make it through the summer, thanks to me. So I hadn't been able to find one until recently and I'm so happy that I did find one because I just love the way they look when they bloom. That flower will shoot up. I guess I like spiky flowers and it's purple, deep purple, very pretty. So I think that'll look nice here. Let's see now, what else did I want to mention? I wanted to mention um, this urn back here. I mentioned before that it came with a red geranium in it and that it wasn't gonna work out here because I don't really want red per se or even fuchsia, but um, so I moved it. I didn't, I didn't toss it, I moved it. And I didn't move a plant into this urn from my collection of ragtag uh, clearance cast-offs. Instead, I bought a new clearance plant because it looked like a good candidate for this uh, container in terms of size, and it also looked like I was going to be able to create possibly a ball topiary, and that's what I'm going for. I'm trying to train it into a three-ball topiary. So far, I'm happy with how it's turning out, so we'll see how it goes. Um, I showed these um, snapdragons last time and when I bought those on clearance I also did not know what color they would be and unfortunately they're not really colors that I would have purchased had I bought them full price and could see what color they would be. The thing with clearance plants is a lot of times you just fly blind. So they're beautiful and I'm not going to take them out but they're not what I would choose. They're a little warmer than what I would want right there. I'm trying to go for a more cool palette and a little more um, muted, but they're very healthy and they're gonna stay. Um, I also wanted to mention, ignore my bags of gravel. Oh, no, the gravel's there for a reason. I'll mention what that's for. This little um, bed here that I'm standing in, or these, this collection of beds is a, still a work in progress. I've completed the edging on this section. What I did was I went in and I leveled all the bricks that are the edging and then brought the gravel up to the level of where the inside edge of the bricks were. But I have not done that on the other beds. You can see that there's still dirt between the bricks and that they're all wonky, different angles and tipping. Same thing over here. So I still need to get in here with a level and my mallet and some sand and complete the job of edging these and giving them a nice finished look and that would be why I have bags of gravel over there. I have to in, um, increase the amount of gravel overall but I don't want to do that till I finish the edging. And there's my debris from my tree trimming which brings me to the topic of tree trimming. We have um, a lot of trees as I mentioned and these trees haven't been trimmed in a little while. We usually do them every five years or so and it's been about seven years. So you can see there's a lot of dead stuff in these cedar trees. They're very messy, especially the stuff that's died. It just comes down all the time and makes a huge mess in the beds. So these are gonna be trimmed. The pines, the pines I'm not going to have trimmed. I would like to, but trying to be economical and it's saving me money to not do them. So they're not going to be trimmed. However, I will trim <clears throat> the tree that's at the south end of our house because it's kind of, encroaching on the roof of the house. It grows very fast. It's a toy-on tree. And then our arborists are also going to do a lot of trimming in the back. So they're, they've got a lot of work to do when they come out. Now, I wanted to mention something else. Oh, you really can't see it from here. There's a little, there's a little plant. Let's see if I can zoom in. There's a little wee plant. Huh. I don't know if you can see that, right? Oh, there's my finger right there, the tip of my finger. Well, I'll tell you a little bit about that in a minute. Let's go back over here. 
So, <clears throat> no changes over here to speak of. A few extra shrubs in the shrub nursery because Clarence and I can't resist. So I've got a couple of lavenders here that are new. I've also got a couple of leucanthus, Mexican sage, which are nice drought tolerant plants that I believe are natives. Not 100% sure on that. And then I have a, a gara plant that I got. It's kind of, what is it? Right there. It's that one, that one right there. And I bought those because <laughs> something dumb I did. You know, I was talking about this driveway triangle last month and I wanted all those weeds out and I did get the weeds out. But in the process of that whole the whole day that I spent out here, I didn't didn't do right by this little status. Remember how pretty it looked last month? Well, I thought they could be divided. Apparently they can't. <laughs> So it's unhappy because I damaged the roots. And then further, I really didn't take this bed down far enough to suppress the weeds with these paper bags. And my plan was to put the paper bags and cover it with mulch and have everything just, you know, die out. But I did pull the weeds first, I should mention. But because the bed was so raised, I really should have removed a lot of dirt before I did that. So this has got to be redone, which I'm kicking myself about. I hate redoing jobs. And then the little plant that you can't really see was actually the other half of the status when I tried to divide it. I don't think that either one of them will make it. The one in the driveway strip down there actually lost its root. I put it in the ground anyway, but the root completely broke off because it was only half a root and it was brittle. So the leucanthas are to fill the spots for both of those status plants, which unfortunately I do not believe are going to make it. Lastly, just a peek, I'm not gonna go all the way up there. I have started reworking this area. Not a lot has gotten done because I'm just, I don't have enough time. There's not enough days in the, hours in the day and there's not enough me to get around. So as time permits, I'll keep working on it. I probably should have waited, finished some other things before I started this, but it seemed like a good day to start working on it because we had had rain and the rain softened this area up and I was having trouble digging this out. It wasn't very level and there was a lot of, I don't know what it was. It was some kind of a weird, not quite gravel, something. It almost wanted to remind me of cement, but it wasn't even cement. It was some kind of thick, substance that was um, in the ground and I had to, to get out and it got really soft from the rain so that made it easier to pull it out but I also found a lot of gravel that I need to get in there and, and remove. I do have a plan for that area. I'm going to put in a, a rectangular planter and the um, the pink little bougainvillea that is sitting right here is going to be trellised against that wall and I do have um, drip coming almost to that wall there from my back garden. So I'll be able to keep that water because that's in a very forgettable spot where I might not uh, take care of it. So that wraps up the um, February garden tour. Hopefully by March, um, things will look a lot different because, well, it'll be spring or the beginning of spring. The trees will be trimmed. I'll have had time to do some projects. I will be doing less out front because I have a lot to do in the back. And so I'm gonna post a separate video for the backyard, hopefully in about two weeks. We're expanding our back garden, as I mentioned before, and we've got a heck of a lot to do back there. So thank you for um, watching my video. Be sure to let me know if you think I should paint that bench and what color I should paint it. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of my videos, be sure to subscribe. And you have a great gardening day.